Hi, I'm Carolyn Helfrich, and I have the distinct privilege of being at the home and studio of Gary and Corinne Melchers. I am in Corinne's garden right now, and it is amazing. Um, we've gone, we've gone through the first flush of all the spring bulbs and um, the spring perennials, and now we're into roses and peonies and baptisia. And the the gardener here has. Um, gone out this morning and picked a bucket of flowers for us to play with today. So these are all of our treasures that we were that we um, were picked today. So this is Baptisia. It comes in this wonderful blue and also a uh, um, a bright yellow and now kind of a mauve purple from what I understand. You can see more of these behind me. These are a foxglove. This is the last remnants and still awfully beautiful columbine. Look at that dark color. Sweet William. I have a William, a, a son named William. We grow this at our house. This is mock orange. If you ever have room for a mock orange, it has the most delicious smell. So this is a wonderful thing to bring into your home. As we do our arrangements today, we're gonna think about just adding our, our garden abundance into our home for, for different reasons. This is called love in a mist or love in a puff. It comes in blue and white. And not only is the bloom beautiful, but the little seed pod is just as wonderful. We've got peonies of different colors and stages. Here's a beautiful fig leaf to do some, that sometimes things need to take like an overnight condition. We might talk about a little bit about conditioning. This is a beautiful single rose. Here's some poppy foliage, which this is, see these have not opened, these are the buds of the poppies. Here's another beautiful foxglove. And these roses are just, oh, they smell like roses should smell. And this is a salvia, which I believe is the Black Knight series. And so when it opens, it's gonna have this amazingly royal blue um, stem. So these are our treasures. I'm gonna put them back in the water. So today we're going to um, use some things that we can find in our pantries, um, around our house and things like that to um, showcase several flowers or a larger arrangement. And um, so these are three sweet little bottles. I took the, the price tags or took the labels off. And so now we can use them as bud bases. And I'm gonna use, you could do um, everything in one, one type of flower, all three vases with one flower. I'm gonna do um, three different flowers and then kind of cluster them together. Um, one thing you want to do is always, and I just um, take off any of the foliage that's going to be under the water and then always clip your stems again before you put them in water. You might have to clip it a couple times. I want to make sure that we get these pretty little buds so I didn't want to cut off too much. And then this beautiful columbine. I'll use this together. And you can, one way you can size for your bud bases is pull it to the edge and kind of hold it up to the bottle the way you want it and then cut from there. Oh, oh, oh. You have a very, very, very tiny little vase you could use, save him. 
So those are both pretty delicate. So I think I'll use the Baptisia for the other three. And you can kind of cluster them if you want to add a little bit of foliage. Here's some um, of the poppy foliage. And I'm going to be a little unorthodox here. Pull off a little bit. And then you can stick that in for a little bit of extra weight, visual weight at the bottom. You can kind of make your own little leaf this way. You could do this with a hosta leaf and not have to trim it down. That would be a great leaf to use for that. That's actually, let's do it over here. A hosta leaf would be work great that way. And you know, don't, when, when I talk about like, um, don't discount just using all green if you, um, if you have that. So here we've got this beautiful little cluster. You could put it, um, you could run them down the middle of a table like that, or again, just leave them clustered and have some little candles or something like that. And you've got a, a really pretty centerpiece. Now to change the look totally, well, we'll leave that one. We'll take out the purple and look what happens. I kind of hate to cut this stem. This bottle is not tall enough, but you get the idea of having that beautiful, beautiful foxglove bloom showcased in one vase. So for this, um, you could have your selection, the shorter vase like this, and then two taller vases that would support these a little bit better. And this would be beautiful on a mantle or something like that. That would just be stunning. Again, use our little, little bit of foliage there. These are just amazing. As, as you can see behind me, they're just stunning. Um, here's the Love in a Mist and the Salvia. Again, you could do the same thing. Um, conditioning. Best to cut your flowers in the morning when they've had overnight to kind of soak up water and um, heart um, become a little bit more turgid and you don't have the, the heat of the day it's just like us we feel better when in the morning when we're um when we first get up also we're more refreshed from a good night's sleep um and then put them in cut them and put them in water um again cut the stems the all the foliage that would be underwater cut that off and then just let them soak up water um sometimes it's best to when you're out in the garden to cut your flowers one day and give them a full day to drink up water and become really turgid and um, conditioned if you're gonna um, send them off to, uh, with, a, with an arrangement or something like that. Sometimes when you're in a hurry before a dinner party or people coming over, you just got that call. Sometimes you do have to just run right out, but make sure you um, and to the garden and make your arrangement. Just make sure you cut your stems at an angle if you cut your stems at an angle, that's more surface area for the water to take up. And then always cut, give your stems a fresh cut before you, after you've had them out of water, before you put them back in water. And they'll just continue to take up that way. So for our next arrangement, I'm going to use a clear glass cube. This one is a five by five by five. 
Um, you can use any size. Um, they're easily obtained at any of the craft stores and um, to make kind of a structure within to um, help hold your flowers. I'm gonna use some of the aluminum wire. This is um, a, a 12 gauge aluminum wire. It's very pliable um, and um, you'll see how, how meticulous and hard this is. So I'm gonna do some very distinct measuring here. I usually do about three lengths for this size cube. You would want, of course, if you had a larger cube, more wire and vice versa for smaller. See how easily this just crinkles up when you put it in. And this forms kind of like an, um, a, a brace or an, um, helps your flowers stand straight. Normally, um, or for decades now, people would use Oasis, the green foamy stuff that everybody likes to squish together. Um, that is not very sustainable. So we're trying to go back to ways of not using um, floral foam. It's a plastic um, petroleum material and so it doesn't degrade and so this is one way to be a little bit more environmentally and sustainable which um, I know the melters would appreciate. So I'm going to start off with some greenery. This is a wonderful fig foliage. It will perk back up once I cut the stem and I'm going to cut it at an angle but I'm also going to cut up the stem like that. That gives it a little bit more room to take up some water. And just put it in here like this and it's gonna give me a little bit, cut it a little too long. This is another good idea for hydrangeas. Anything that you want to, any woody stem that you wanna take up water. Here is some peat, um, peony or peony foliage depending on where you're from and how you pronounce it and I think I do it both ways so this gives us a nice little base of foliage again you want to make sure that your foliage is out of the water but that'll give a nice base and I'm gonna start out with some of these beautiful, beautiful roses and peonies because this will give us a nice um, base. Now, as amazing as these old antique um, that's, um, roses are, they are very, very thorny. Now, so what I did there was I had it under the wire at one point, but it, it was going to stand up easier. You just kind of have to, that's, the, that's another advantage of using the wire or something besides the oasis. On the oasis, you should not pull your stem in and out. It, it creates a tunnel and the flower might not get water. Whereas on this, you can be a little bit more... Um, can make more decisions that way. I am gonna just pull off some of these thorns. I would hate to take this to a friend and they go to take it apart and get stuck by all the thorns. So I am gonna, and they really will just snap off. This is going to be a beautiful pink and white arrangement. I'm not sure if we're going to need a lot of small things in here because these are so fabulous. And then the peonies. And this is just so super simple and so amazingly beautiful. But that wire in there just helps keep them a little bit more ruly, a little bit more. Now, 
here's so this would be a good good centerpiece here's your measuring tool for a centerpiece put your elbow on the table and make a fist and your flower should never be above your above your fist and almost preferably more at your wrist and that's so people can be able to see over it um, I have measured thousands of a range of centerpieces with just like this um, if you know your table and chairs some table some chairs sink down more so you really need to stick with the wrist um, but um, you just kind of once you've figured out how it is at your house you're good to go so I think you could almost just be let's do a little bit more white over here to kind of balance that as far as shape when you're going out in your garden to pick you don't always know what you're gonna get so it's if um, you really do have to be a little flexible it doesn't always have to be matchy matchy or perfectly symmetrical in fact the trend of today is that things are a little bit more horizontal and um, not so matchy matchy anymore so you've got that so I think that's perfectly lovely but then if we come back and put a little bit of the love in a mist in That just adds another dimension that's so, so beautiful and delicate. This is great and for a wedding. A little bit of blue, love in a mist, it's perfect. If you were having a bridal shower or something like that, or like a little baby, baby boy shower, a little bit of that blue. And then Now there's the old adage or the old rule of thumb that you should always have odd numbers in an arrangement. Um, I only have two baptisia. So what I'm gonna do is, this is gonna be a little bit taller, but it's so um, spaced apart on the stem, you can see it together. So this is just a nice fun little accent. And again, if you add this last, then it's gonna be able to stand, all the stems together with the wire is gonna make it be able to stand up nicely. And so there you have a nice little centerpiece So as we continue to use our wonderful bucket of flowers from the Melcher's garden, we've just done, just completed our um, dining room centerpiece. And now, you know, you don't always go in your dining room, but you're always in your bedroom or your kitchen or a nice little thing in your family room. So we're gonna use, reuse these flowers to make two smaller arrangements. I um, collected a little bit more greenery this is called epimedium. It is a nice little shade plant and it will help give me some structure possibly. Just got a little windy. This is simply a wine glass from the dollar, stemless wine glass from the dollar store. And this is, I think, in the candle section of the dollar store. So this one's nice because it has that nice base and it won't tilt as much. This one is nice because when you take the flowers out, you can use it. Um, so we are just gonna, I mentioned earlier how amazing the mock orange smelled. So we're gonna add, put a little bit of this in here. Sometimes you don't always wanna put um, something with a lot of fragrance in your dining room flowers. 
just because you don't want it to compete with the food. Um, although sometimes I will use mint or if I know it's an Italian dinner, you can do oregano and basil and things like that are wonderful. I've done weddings for Italians and they've just loved the, that's, um, the basil in there and all because it just reminds them of good food. So this amazing peony can almost just feel like you could stick it right down in there and let's actually try that. So cut the stem again. We're assuming this might be the day after your dinner party. So we're going to cut off the spent bloom there on the rose. And this is a sweet addition. I just love this love in a mist. Again, I want to cut the stems, make sure that there's not going to be any foliage underneath. Foliage when it's been in the water for a while does not smell good. And it just doesn't, the bacteria that can grow from, from all that extra surface area means that your flowers won't last as long either. Take the time to go through your garden and as you um, think about mint, you know, it's not just for um, iced tea and mojitos and mint juleps, it can be for nice pretty arrangements too. And it lasts a long time, it'll actually root and then you could give that away as a gift. Um, this is a fun little thing, this is called money plant. I love it. A lot of people will um, let it dry and these become kind of um, translucent and they're, they look like little coins, hence the name money plant. But it has this pretty little purple bloom earlier in the season and then it makes these fun seed pods. So I like to use this as kind of a little bit of a filler. This was growing under an oak tree, so we're going to get the oak tree stuff off. So this just adds a nice little texture. Remember, adding your garden with the greenery, you can add so many textures as well as fragrances and structure. But um, if you like, if you add texture, just elevates your arrangement. I think that might be a little bit too much. Always know you can edit your flowers and you just want to make sure you don't cut off too much. Just make another arrangement with the little ones, right? So this would be a beautiful arrangement to go on a bedside table and lovely fragrances to wake up to. So our next arranged, next little smaller arrangement made from our Um, centerpiece. We'll use some peony foliage. Some of the money plant. will give us a little bit of structure. But what's going to give us our most structure is this beautiful hot pink rose. And again, you can just be done with that. But since we have these other beautiful flowers, let's do 
Oh, my goodness. You know, this could just be, that could just be in and of itself, that set of um, roses. So we can do that peony, and then let's come back to our Sweet William here. So those little blooms that I saved earlier. Again, we are doing lots of onesies old time um, rules of flower arranging would say maybe you shouldn't do that but i think for this purpose you just need to do what you're going to enjoy and i think these these are just lovely um, let's try this big guy He's going to be a little bit heavy, so try to get him positioned a little bit into the rows. And I think you could do that and get, a, get by with it for what we're doing here. The main rules of floral design, when, in my opinion, when you're doing it for your home, is that you love it and that you enjoy it. not being judged on this other than how we like it. Having the columbine go all the way around kind of brings it all together. Helps if you actually stick it in. And again, maybe we can add a little bit more. I think we have enough. So here's um, another way to reuse reuse to reuse your flowers <laughs> 